Hello, this is Hattie from Stop Cox Women Plumbers, and it gives me great pleasure to uh, be speaking today to Jamie Fisher from Monument Tools. And I've got to say before we start talking to Jamie that um, uh, I approached Monument, um, I think it was for our second event, and um, I was really impressed with their family business because you know we, we kind of run our business off the kitchen table. And so I like the idea of a family business. We approached Monument, they said, sure, let's have a look. And then they came to one event. And then after that, they invited us down to their, uh, their factory. We had a tour of the museum and everything. It was a fantastic day. And then they hit us with, we'd like to be a regular supporter. So I'm really, really chuffed that we're now back uh, with a proper installer event and Monument are back on board. And so without any further ado, I'd like to welcome you. Hi, Jamie Fisher. Hi Hattie, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm very well, thank you very much. Um, I hope that introduction um, suited your beard. Ab absolutely, yeah, it, was as, <laughs> it was as big as the beard. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting being in an industry where people don't know your name, but it, they, they recognise you wherever you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so can I, let's, uh, let's, let's just dive straight in. Can I ask you why you think it's important, in your own opinion, or your own words, why do you think it's important for us to get more women into this industry? I've been in it since the beginning, really. My, I was brought up by my mum and my sister, so I had a heavy female influence in things growing up, but at the same time had a, a very domineering father, mother and father divorced when I was, was young, who was a sales director for a printing firm. So I sort of got a great work ethic, but an understanding of the fact that my sister found it harder to do things that I did um, and it was yeah not really right for me um, and as I've gone through construction and, and managed teams over the years I've always stood out a little bit because most of my teams if not all of them have been a sort of 50-50 mix on a gender basis because for me it's the right way to do it you can't be doing one you know it, it's just a natural thing for me and I am very conscious and a colleague of mine, uh, a fellow liveryman in the Worshipful Company of Plumbers, uh, a lady who'd been in, in plumbing for many, many years, running a business down Reading Way, um, described our industry as pale, male and stale. Um, and I don't think she was far off, to be fair. You know, there are a prevalence of balding men in their 40s, 50s and early 60s. Um, to which I am now part of that club, although 20 years ago I wasn't. Um, and it just makes sense to me to have the right person for the job, irrespective of gender. Uh, and I think, as Ray Stafford said in a previous interview, if you discount 50% of the population just based on gender, then you're a bit silly, really, because, you you know, you are, you, you're fishing in a very shallow pond. Um mm -hmm. And that's never made sense to me, not in any industry. Yeah. Um, but also, I suppose, starting my career in retail with Sainsbury's, it was completely the other way around. Mm -hmm. You know, I worked on um, replenishment shifts in the evening to which there were five lads and 47 ladies. Um, and, you know, it, it just, yeah, it, it's always made sense to me to be equal. Well, of course, I came from a teaching background where it was all women. Yeah, I've never understood that either. My, both my kids are, are in school now. Um, they're five and seven. And when we went round the local junior school, infant school to start off with, they had a 50-50 split across mm. reception and junior. And it was one of the reasons, in many reasons, we, we opted for that school. Um, unfortunately, for, for, for several reasons, including somebody burnt the school down at the beginning of lockdown, unfortunately, <laughs> and teachers moved away that's now not the case and I'm a little mm. bit disappointed but looking forward to them going up to the junior school where there are more male teachers because there should be a mix yeah you know, kid, yeah um, kids should be yeah from, should uh, learn from both I mean w there's lots of evidence to show um that um women in particular learn better if they're in a if they're in a women-only environment but that yep. I don't think I think that um once you've learned done your learning you need to get out into the world straight away because the real world isn't you know isn't like that is it so no. I've, all, I've, I've often been against kind of separatist type activities um 
simply because of that reason, because it's not the real world. But I do really believe that we have to, uh, and the reason why we started the WIP was because women were so isolated and so far apart from each other. And also because I, I'd been plumbing for 16 years before I met another woman who was a plumber. And I listen to some people now and they, and they have not, not met another woman. So it's very different to tradesmen because I, I don't know a single tradesman who doesn't know another tradesman. But I know loads of tradeswomen who don't know other tradeswomen apart from obviously me. Yeah, and, and, and it's yeah, it's just it's just not right. I, I grew up on scaffolding as a kid. My stepdad was a roofer, um, and I can't remember seeing a single woman in a in a builder's merchant. You know, there was certainly none in the trades back in the sort of early nine early eighties. Even you mm. know, it's and and I didn't sort of understand why. I was always inquisitive because you know, mum always worked. Um, but the separation of, of the industries, I saw, I, I, so I didn't didn't see the logic in it, not even I mean, as a I, kid. I got it at school because I wanted to do engineering when I was at school, and they basically told me it was a, that was a boys' subject, and I wasn't allowed to do it. <laughs> it's crazy. Whereas, it's really whereas, crazy. <laughs> but I think you still get it now, and, and and one reason I've sort of got involved in in education within our industry, so I sit on a couple of bodies and boards to do with education and technical training. Because when I was at school, engineering and let's call let's say plumbing, so the trades, mm. irrespective of gender, were considered to be probably very low down on the um, you know the sort of desire list for teachers when they were talking careers, mm. um, and it was almost as though well that's the sort of thing that Johnny in the corner does, you know the the the, the one that's not as academically gifted as everybody else. Now, the successful tradespeople I know would dance circles around me when it came to you know maths and practical subjects because they just do these things off the top of their head mm. but you know maybe they didn't like humanities and geography and history neither did I particularly <laughs> um but it, but well, it's but it's wrong so so whether it's mm. male or female I think we should be doing a lot more at school to encourage people into the trades mm. I, I, com I completely agree with you I completely agree with you and I think that um it needs to start earlier than secondary school, is my, yes, my opinion. Yes, absolutely, yeah. Because the seed needs to be in there. And because um, I, 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 when, I when I was 18, I never wanted to be a plumber. I wanted to, I wanted to, I basically wanted to fit in with everyone. It was only uh, when I got a bit older that I wanted to differentiate myself. So we go, as humans, we go through these different processes, you know, where we, first of all, we need to differentiate ourselves from our parents. And that's when we get rebellious. And then, then yeah. we we want to be the same as our peers. And then as we get a bit older, we want to be, we want to stand out from our peers. So that kind of followed me uh, when I was 16. I didn't want to do, I didn't, you know, I didn't want to step outside. It was bad enough for me trying to step outside of my family and all those expectations, you know, to even become a teacher in the first place. But I couldn't also step out of um step out of that and do something completely outrageous so I had to do the teaching side of it first and then when I was kind of confident enough and grown up enough I stepped out of that and into plumbing when I was 27 and so a lot of women do join the industry when they're a bit older but we need that seed to be planted and we need it planted not only in girls but we need it planting in boys we need it planting that anybody can do anything don't we yeah, and, and and I think it, absolutely, you know, like I said, my daughter's seven and, you know, I really try and involve her in, you know, anything I do practically as much as I would do my son because, mm. you know, whether it's fixing a bike or building a chair, one of the best photographs I've got of her is sort of 18 months old, two years old with a little plastic Bosch toolkit, <laughs> you know, helping make her little Ikea chair and table oh, because she just, she wanted to. You know, and, you know, everybody's got the same level of curiosity. And if people are exposed to the same yeah. thing, they then get the same opportunity. Um, and at least the opportunity to show an aptitude across a multiple, you know, string of, uh, of potential careers, mm. particularly with technology the way it is these days, the opportunity um you know let me change it a little bit nick who looks after education for us was doing um the bpec competition a couple of weeks ago uh, and there was a, a young woman who was there training and even just the way she organized herself and laid things out 
Nick said he, you know, he saw the, 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 the guys copying her after a couple of hours, actually seeing how efficiently she was working rather than having to, you know, stretch a couple of feet to fetch them. Everything was, was within reach. Now, mm. if she hadn't have been in the class, they wouldn't have learned that lesson mm. that day. And we'll probably take that through the rest of their working lives because it just made logical just sense. Makes, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, but, but yeah, boys yeah. aren't logical. <laughs> we're, not, we're, we're just not. <laughs> Well, I, I suppose, you know, I suppose it comes from um, way back when, when, um, you know, uh, literally in caves with children and animals chasing you and what have you, you had to be able to know the best way, the easiest way to grab your kids and get safe. <laughs> and get gone, yeah. <laughs> I suppose, um, you know, while you're um, hoping that your old man was out there spearing it for you or whatever. <laughs> but, but, you know, it's not like that anymore, <laughs> no. I'm glad to say. But anyway, let's, let's, um, the philosophy is great and, and and you know i think a lot of people need to hear that that is where we should be moving and i hopefully they will they will hear that um but let me ask you now more what why did monument decide to back the event and and, and in in such a kind of a brilliant way in terms of like the commitment as well what, what was it that made made that happen <laughs> There's a couple of things. Firstly, we're not a short term commitment sort of company. Um, we've been around since 1818. We're a fifth generation business. Um, and it has taught me patience that I would never have been able to experience working for corporate businesses where you're only as good as yesterday's number and you're absolutely held account to tomorrow's number. That's not mm -hmm. the way we work. Mm -hmm. We understand that things take time. And if we want to do something or help facilitate change, then we've got to be in it for the long term. It's not just a case of dipping our toe and going for the zeitgeist that, you know, at the minute, potentially women in trades is, 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 is cool or is, you know, fashionable mm -hmm. or is we don't care. We genuinely don't. There's, there's a genuine desire there to, from our point of view, make a product that is suitable for every potential customer who may use it. And one of the things that we've found most useful in being associated with WIT has been the feedback that we've got from women in trades, you know, to understand that some of the products that we make aren't particularly practical and it isn't just for women because I certainly don't believe women are the weaker sex um mm. you know my sister would take lumps out of me bless her <laughs> and she's half my size but um you know th th there are things that we do and engineering decisions that we make that as an engineering business if we don't take into consideration the usage of everybody then we're not going to make the best product and we've changed lots of random little things over the years to our products based on little bits of feedback because we can because we make them so extending our pool of field knowledge by being involved in in wit and having access to that sort of group has been invaluable really mm. um but we understand it's a long-term project so we made a long-term commitment you know um i think it was five years originally and, it, and yeah. it rolls on as it goes so yeah. um it, it's where we want to be the other side of it is relationships you know um ui and hattie of have, 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 sorry micah have, 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 have hit it off and get get on okay that that might not have been the case it might mm. have taken a couple of years for for you know for, for relationships to develop as they do and as mm. all relationships you have your ups you have your downs and if you're not committing to things for a long term then you, you don't get the best out of them. You know, yeah. you, you wouldn't go into marriage saying, oh, well, we'll give it 12 months and see how it works out. <laughs> um, I'm not a fan of wedding cake, so. No, I am either. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I think that's, um, yeah, yeah, uh, great. And I, I think that, that it is a long game because, you know, th th there are, there aren't, there isn't a pool of, you know, 10,000 women waiting to come into this industry. It's going to be a slow trickle and we're going to have to just keep working on it and keep something and create something that was sustainable and hopefully, um, you know, with with uh, regular commitments from from yourselves and uh, companies like that who want to give regular commitments will mean that when I'm like, you know, when I fall off my Zimmer frame, there's still going to be a wit event. Yeah. <laughs> and that's that's uh, yeah. my kind of dream, because at least then we can now have somewhere to go. Yeah, I think legacy 
as I get older, legacy becomes more important. Mm. I spent a large proportion of the earlier part of my career climbing a corporate ladder. Um, and now it's more about what you leave behind. I'll be far, I am far prouder of the fact, or far more proud, if that's the right English, of the fact that I've been involved in this and I can have that sort of conversation with my daughter and other you know young women that I, I come across in the industry and you know I've been involved in the young merchants previously with the BMF and those sorts of things and it's great seeing a, a higher proportion of, of women recognized in the merchanting part of our business mm. so or our industry rather so hopefully when a, a a woman in the trades turns up to a trade counter she's more likely to encounter another woman on the other side of that counter because having been in trade counters when that's not been the case I, I've been mortified by the way that that women have been treated at trade counters uh, across the nation across nationals and independents and just in general has not mm. been fantastic and it was great to hear Ray saying you know that that's not the case with them and, and knowing that business very well and dealing and, and with I know them, I can I can yeah. testify that it isn't because I've dealt with several uh, several of their branches uh, and knowing several of the women in the procurement side of, of, of that business you know that they, they are very well treated and very well respected and mm. you know have all been promoted and been long term within that business because it's about the right person for the job mm. not the gender mm. yeah yeah exactly couldn't have said it better um right jamie to finish off our little talk um i'm going to leave the last word to you um okay. and so what would you say to could be your daughter or it could be any young woman or any um older woman if you like who wants to come into the industry how would you encourage them to do that i would encourage them to seek the advice of, of women in trades and to get some peer advice uh, because it doesn't matter how many men they know in the trades whether their father's a plumber or whatever else it's never quite going to be the same you know you can go on the tools with your dad at the weekend and learn what it's like um but if you're going into a trade counter with your dad who's been a customer of that merchant for the last 20 years you are going to get treated differently to when you walk in on your own so you know bear that in mind that you want some honest and open feedback and understand what it's going to be like the next side of it would be is understand it's a business it's a particularly if you're looking to go out on your own you know, understand that you need to learn as much about running a business as you do about hanging a radiator or fitting a boiler, because our industry in general, irrespective of the gender of, of the individual, my view is they don't get enough training in business. And a lot of those businesses fail early doors mm. because they don't understand things like public liability insurance. They don't charge for um, providing an estimate. As soon as you walk out the door and you get in your van, it's costing you money, whether that's mm. diesel or time that you can't be doing another job. So understanding it as a business. And then when you do that, there is a lot of money to be made in our industry doing it properly. But there's also a tendency to be too nice and give things away. So, yeah. you know, if I could say establish a business plan early days, and there are quite a few very good people out there to speak to about that and if anyone not wants least to us, talk to me obviously. not least you guys absolutely mm -hmm. you know that's that's the whole model that you set yourselves up on and, and what yeah. really warmed us to, to what it was that you did it wasn't and I'm, I'm not going to drop any trade names but it, it wasn't just a female ex you weren't mm -hmm. just trying to be another facilities management company I'm trying really hard not to name names <laughs> um but you know but just for women that's you've mm. taken a completely unique start from scratch slant on it and yeah that that would be it you know but do your research understand what you're doing and understand the advantages of it working for yourself is fantastic mm. you know i love the job that i do but at 46 now um you know staring back across a career where i've always worked for other people i probably would have made changes early yeah. doors yeah. working for yourself is great but you've got yeah. to know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thanks, Jamie. I'm going to uh, end the recording now, but thank you so much. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you at the WIC conference. Our pleasure. Thank you very much.